I think a question that many of us dance around but rarely openly answer is to what degree are women responsible for feminism? The answer is an integral one, I think. Uh, I think it's fair to say that feminism is dependent on the female population of its target culture accepting and embracing it in the majority. Now, when the SPLC designated MRA sites as a hate group, uh, there was a bulletin posted on A Voice for Men shortly after in regards to another MRA uh, threatening to commit suicide, and this caused several female feminists with Twitter accounts to comment on it. Uh, and instantly this phrase, uh, you know, hate group, was being parroted by the unthinking feminist acolytes as though it was some universal truth. Uh, I remember one particular tweet where some feminist was screeching, um, you know, the MRM, uh, parentheses, a hate group, uh, you know, is trying to stop one of their own from committing suicide. Uh, I'm conflicted about this. This is a classic example of female sloganeering, where the language is provided for her by the state. The state told her the language to use, and feminists immediately adopted in hopes of suppressing free speech, uh, which in this society is analogous to hate speech, uh, intolerance, and even the infamous thought crime uh, we found in Orwell's dystopia. I think Orwell said it best when he claimed that it was in fact women who were the most bigoted adherents of the party, uh, the swallowers of slogans, the amateur spies, and the nosers out of unorthodoxy. The orthodoxy we're dealing with here uh, is that of enforced dialogue with rigidly confined limitations and tolerances defined by feminist and progressive narratives. They tell you what you can and can't criticize, and when these boundaries are breached, we have state institutions regulating these free speech event horizons and labeling anything but the status quo as hate speech. When feminists posing as moderates highlight the men's movement's aversion towards working with feminists, it is in effect an attempt towards the quelling of our movement altogether since the feminist narrative is of course inherently structured to silence male dissent. If we are to make the distinction between women and feminists, the distinction must also be made that women are the tool with which feminism and the state tyranny that follows it are implemented. Uh, now this may be an unpopular claim to make, and in making it, I claim it to be not necessarily reflective of others in the men's movement, but women are, in my opinion, inherently feminist-minded as a whole. The fact that modern feminism has had its genesis in the West and has been exported to developing Asian and Indian cultures and nationalities with essentially the same textbook phases of rapid and ubiquitous female embracement speaks volumes, in my opinion. I mean, so long as you correct for cultural idiosyncrasy, the manner with which women accept feminism stays the same across cultural lines. You'll see a male political elite promote feminism as female advancement. You'll see domestic violence campaigns and no-fault divorce laws instituted as fundraising campaigns for the facilitation of female divorce and desertion of the home. You'll see men portrayed as inherently violent. And women in particular like that last little tidbit since psychologically it justifies the deception, theft, and violence they're about to unleash upon men with their newfound state power. And then uh, they go about systematically destroying fatherhood, society, and their respective nations from the inside out. The war uh, against feminism is one which will inexorably be fought where our targets will have been carefully aligned by feminists with the interests of women. In other words, we're going to be fighting against female privilege, which will be passed off as basic female human rights. Things like abortion, birth control, breast cancer screening, affirmative action, all of these at one time or another have been assigned under the purview of women's rights. Uh, but a right to opt out of parenthood or male birth control and prostate cancer research and screening are conspicuously absent. Such is the result of the equality between the sexes that feminists seek. If Western society uh, professes that human rights are innate and inviolable, then clearly it would make sense that to give one group of human beings access to these so-called rights, as feminists refer to them, based on female biology, without extending to men rights of equal and comparable quality is in fact a blatant discrimination against men based on our innate biology. Which of course is exactly what feminists prepared to fight against. This boils down to the fact that for women, uh, their ultimate concern and priority lies in their own safety. It's that simple, and anybody's fundamental human rights, or due process, or financial, physical, and emotional security, uh, indeed, even if someone's freedom and life hangs in the balance, it matters nothing to the biological imperative of access to safety and provision and comfort. Uh, because female safety is the prime biological directive, they simply do not care about a free society. Freedom is male invented, built, copyrighted, bought and paid for in blood. Freedom is male. Find me a woman that understands that although rape is a horrible and vicious crime, that rape shield laws deprive men of their due process. Find me a woman that understands this. Uh, if you manage to do this, and odds are you can't, well then go ahead and find me large groups of women fighting against rape shield laws in favor of men, and that I guarantee you that you won't find. The biological directive tells them that if they support due process, then the chance exists that one day 
they, in fact, might be raped, and that rapist could possibly, in a free and open society, work the system and use due process to get away with it, and women will never support this in any large number, ever. It's not the fact that women want to be safe that I take issue with. Uh, you know, everybody wants to be safe. It's the fact that they're so obsessed with their safety and yet so averse to procuring it themselves in a way that doesn't infringe on the freedom of others. Now, in regards to biological compulsions, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and say that I don't care. Uh, I don't care what hardwired tendencies women have. I mean, it's beyond the point. Men have a biological imperative to pass on their genes, yet the vast majority of men don't go around forcing women to have sex, do they? Yet when women aren't having their biological safety and provision compulsion satiated, then all sorts of coercive state power is leveraged against men to extract it, even under the threat of imprisonment in many instances, or in other words, by force. Uh, you know, and it's this willingness to leverage the state against men to take what they want by force that I find evil and hypocritical. They want to be safe even if it means that others will suffer for it. We're talking about a society where women like Heidi Jones can make up out of thin air some fictional story about someone raping her for no other reason other than she wanted attention, and an entire legal system will take her word for it. I mean, what if some innocent male was actually prosecuted for this? You know, it's scratch that. How many innocent men have been and are being prosecuted for false rape accusations right now? Would feminists, who claim to support equality between the sexes, support an honest inquiry into the prevalence of false rape accusations and how they negatively impact innocent men? No and neither would women as a collective. Feminists have helped put in place a legal system of predation of the innocent falsely accused male. It has been men throughout history that had the presence of forethought enough to know the evil that is unleashed when we trade freedom for safety. The most fervent resistors of legislation like the Patriot Act have been men, uh, and these men are not stupid. They understand that terrorist attack is a reality. They even understand that the constitution shirking measures that the Patriot Act puts into place can possibly stop some terrorist attack somewhere in some hypothetical scenario before it happens. But they resist it anyway. Why? Because no amount of safety and no amount of lives saved is worth it if we can't live free. And more specifically, because the danger of a terrorist attack or of a rapist getting off pales in comparison to the world of danger we would exist in if due process is not upheld to the most stringent standards possible. I mean, Stalin, Mao, Lenin, they didn't have due process either. Ask the tens of millions of people they killed off how safe they felt. You know, I'm sure, though, uh, just in case women are worried, uh, that there was very, very little domestic violence in the Russian gulag. Women. Their entire world and conceptualization of protection and safety exists in a cloud of self-absorption five feet in any direction from their feeble little minds. And you can accuse me of generalizing all you want, but the facts have just been spelled out to you as follows. We have a burgeoning and particularly vicious feminist movement propping up in India, some parts of Malaysia, China, and Japan, and the manner in which women have hopped on board can only be described as a thunderclap. Make no mistake about it, what we are witnessing here is the death of Western civilization. These people, and I use the word loosely, uh, these feminists are nothing more than slogan-spewing automatons fueled by a hatred of everything real and spontaneous. I mean, they actually have a hatred for the spectacle of life itself as it plays out before them. They are micromanaging every unplanned, unapproved human activity in hopes of crushing the spirit of anyone that is actually thinking and alive. Feminism is hatred. It's carefully crafted, carefully hidden, culturally embedded hatred. That's all I gotta say for now.